Hey everyone, this is Adam and today I'm going to be showing you how to add interactive hover states to your HTML email designs in Figma using the Emailify plugin. So to get started, all we need to do is go to the little resources icon at the top of your Figma file. And if you click on that and search for Emailify, so that's E-M-A-I-L-I-F-Y, and under the plugins tab, you'll see the Emailify plugin pop up. So all you need to do to run the plugin is either click on this run button here, or you can click on this little more options icon here and click on the save Figma plugin link. And that's just gonna save it to your plugins list for later. So I'd recommend doing that. And I've already gone ahead and done that myself. So I'm gonna to go to the canvas, I'm just gonna right click anywhere and go down to plugins and then go down to saved plugins and click on the emailify item. And that's just gonna run the plugin that we saved a second ago. So if you're new to the plugin, the way that it works is it basically allows you to design uh, emails in Figma that can then be automatically exported to production ready HTML. So I'm just gonna give you a really quick uh, example of how to do that. So we can just uh, add an email here. So I'm gonna call it my email uh, with hovers and add the new emailify container. And then I'm just gonna go through and add a handful of components to the email. So I'm just gonna click on this one, add in some uh, logo component. Then I'm just gonna go to the CTAs and add a CTA component so we can uh, update our buttons and maybe just add another uh, button component as well. So if we scroll down and add another component with a button down here, and I'll just drop in a footer as well. So we've got that in there. Okay, so that's basically uh, the most simple uh, example I can show you. If you wanna go into detail of how to actually design the email components and uh, design the emails, there's a couple of other really detailed tutorials on the YouTube channel. Just find the Emailify playlist and jump into those. But today I'm just gonna assume that you've already designed your email and all we're gonna be doing is adding some hover states to these button components here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So basically if we uh, preview this at the moment and generate an HTML preview, you can see here that the buttons are clickable. We've got the little cursor there, but they're just static. So they don't have any hover effects on them. So to add some hover effects, what we can do is basically go to the HTML and mobile settings button. So if you click on HTML and mobile settings in the header of the plugin, that's gonna open up this little panel here. And basically that uh, changes depending on what layer you've got selected. So you can see here, the context is changing based on the layer that we select. So in this case, we wanna make sure that we've got a button component selected. So this button component uh, has to have been added through Emailify. It's not gonna work if you've just uh, manually created a button, you need to uh, add this button through Emailify. So you can either do that, as I mentioned, by clicking on one of these components, or you can use the quick add options at the bottom of the plugin. So if you've got a layer selected that uh, lets you add some elements, you can add a button layer through that. So you could add a button like that and drop in a button and that will add an Emailify button component. So I'm just gonna assume you've already got that figured out. And to add a hover state to that component, all you need to do, as I said, is click on the HTML and mobile settings. And you'll see down here, we've got this button hover state section added. So what that lets us do is change the background color and text color of the button in a hover state and also add an optional transition. So we can add uh, transition animations as well. So I'll show you what that looks like right now. So if we know we wanna change the hover state to this button to be matching this uh, little sushi icon here, what we could do is find out what color that is. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, grab a color picker and find the hex value of that color. So I'm just gonna click on my icon, grab that hex color and copy it to my clipboard. And if I now click back into my button layer, what I can do is paste that directly into the uh, hover input here. So I'm gonna paste that into the background hover and add a little uh, hash in front of it. And then I'm gonna add a hex value to the text color as well. So I'm just gonna make that white. So that's hash FFF uh, to make it white. And now if we close off that uh, settings panel and jump back into our preview and hover over that button. You can see here that we've now got a hover state added. So when we hover over that button, it's using the hex value for the background and the text that we added into the plugin settings, and it's using that for the hover state. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So the other thing we can do, uh, as I briefly touched on, is go back into the settings panel so you can access it through uh, this little settings icon if you've got the preview open. So I'm gonna click on it again and this time I'm gonna also add a transition. 
So we can change it from none to fade, for example. So if we click on fade and load that up, if we now hover over the layer, you can see here that it's doing a fade effect on the background color and the text color. So instead of just a instant jump, it's letting us fade between those colors. Uh, we've got some other options as well. So if we wanna do uh, some motion, we can add something like a grow animation. So if we click on grow and refresh the preview and then hover over it, you can see that we've now got a grow effect along with the color effect that we added uh, in those inputs. So that's what that looks like. And you can go through these and experiment with them. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, so there's a bounce one, so you could add a more of a bouncy effect. If it's a really uh, important CTA, you can make it a bit more impactful with an animation like that. But it's really up to you to go through those. So you can go through those individually. So we've got another one down here, obviously, uh, that's a little bit different. So we've got uh, our button with uh, the black background and white text, so we could make that inverted so we could make that go to uh, white background with black text for example and add a fade onto that and if we now refresh the preview you can see that when we hover over this it's basically just gonna uh, change that to be uh, inverted uh, and a cool thing that you can also do is add a stroke to that so if we wanted to make sure that the uh, background automatically had a uh, stroke around it when we invert it on hover you can add a stroke to your button layer in figma so if we add a stroke layer i'm just going to make that two pixels and have it as black and then now if we refresh this preview and go down to our button you can see here that when we hover over it the stroke stays the same and the background's getting uh, knocked out to white so that's a nice way of adding a stroke into the mix. If you wanted to uh, make sure that it kind of knocks out the background but keeps an outline, you can just add a stroke there and that's gonna look pretty good as well. So um, that's a nice little trick if you wanna make it into a more of a ghost button type style. Uh, you can play around with the stroke settings in Figma and uh, see what that looks like when you swap out the hover backgrounds as well. So um, yeah, that's basically it. I was just gonna keep it really simple today just to show you the basics of how to add hover effects onto your buttons. So this is a really easy way to go about it. Uh, you can play around with the effects, as I mentioned. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ones that you can play with. So this is more of a rotation one. Uh, but yeah, those are the three different options you've got. So you've got the transition, text color, and background that you can play with. As I mentioned, just for the button components, this won't work for other components. You just have to make sure that you're using a button component for these options to show up. Uh, the other important caveat is that the hover effects are only supported in certain email clients. So if you wanna get a list of those, you can click on this supported email clients link here. So if you click on that, that's just gonna open up a link in your browser and it's gonna give you a detailed overview of where the hover effects are supported. So for example, it's totally supported in Apple Mail on Mac OS and iOS. It's supported in Gmail on desktop uh, but it's not supported in Gmail on iOS or Android. Um, you'd expect the mobile devices not to support Hover anyway. Uh, but yeah, there's a few little caveats down here that you can look at. Um, so Outlook, obviously notoriously bad at supporting anything. So on Windows, uh, Outlook, it's not gonna work, but on Mac OS, it will. And yeah, you can just go through these and figure out where the Hover effects are gonna work and where they're not gonna work. So uh, that's just a little, uh, caveat to show how you can use the hover effects as more of a progressive enhancement rather than a uh, you know critical piece of the style uh, it's more of just a progressive enhancement where it's supported and if it's not supported it's just going to work uh, normally anyway you're not you're not going to get any hover effects but you can still click on the button uh, as you'd expect so um, yeah, we'll leave it there for today. I just wanted to run through that really quickly with you. Uh, if you've been wondering how to add hover effects onto your HTML emails uh, from Figma, this is gonna be a really easy way to go about it. Uh, and finally, just briefly, if you did wanna export this to HTML from the plugin, you just have to click on this export HTML button here. And if you just click on uh, the HTML email option or any of the platform integrations you wanna use. Uh, you can basically just pick whichever one suits and click on export to HTML. That's just gonna generate the HTML for your email. You can download that to your computer as a zip file. So I'm just gonna click download zip file, save that to my desktop, unzip that file. And now if we open up the folder, you can see here we've got our export uh, here. So we've got a previous file and the HTML file. 
So if we just drop that previous file into our browser, so I'm just gonna drop that into here and load that up. And you can see here that the hover states are showing up uh, in the preview as well. And we can open up the email itself just by going into the folder with the same name, dropping the index.html file in there. So this is basically the final HTML uh, with the hover effects that we added in the plugin and they're working really nicely uh, as we'd expect. So you could now go ahead and send out that email and have those show up in the clients that we looked at a minute ago over here. So uh, yeah, we'll leave it there for today. I just wanted to run through how to add those hover effects to your HTML emails from Figma using Emailify. So um, yeah, if you're using Emailify and have been wanting a bit more creative freedom uh, on your CTAs or CTA buttons, you can now add these hover effects uh, as we just went through in the plugin. And I hope that adds a little bit more flexibility and creativity to your HTML email designs. So um, thank you as always for watching and we'll be back soon with more Figma tutorials like this one very soon.